Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality. In today's video, we're going to go over the testing concept of UI atomic testing. What is atomic testing? Well, an atomic test is one that's extremely focused and tests only a single feature at a time. So if you have a development background, then the concept is widely used when creating unit tests. One question that seems to come out a lot when people are writing these kind of atomic UI tests is, does that mean I can only have one assertion? Well, no, you can have multiple. This is a common misconception, so you can have more than one assertion. However, you've got to be extremely careful in deciding what the assertions are doing, and they should only focus on that single feature. This doesn't mean you can't have more than one. Um, it doesn't mean you only have to one, have one. It just means that you've got to be careful what you're picking out. Like, you might have an assertion that checks the state of a test. Another thing is an atomic test should not mim mimic end-to-end -end behavior. This means we want very few UI interactions. As with end-to-end -end testing, you're not testing a single item or a single feature. This doesn't mean you can't have end-to-end -end tests. You just need to understand the difference between both. What are the advantages of atomic UI testing? Well, they should fail fast. Since they focused on a single feature or a piece of behavior, the test should be small and manageable. But you might ask then, doesn't, doesn't adding more tests make the overall execution slower? And if you're asking this, then it's a good question. It means that when we do things like introducing parallelization into our tests, they execute quicker. Your feedback is quicker, they fail faster, and you get more focused feedback. The point isn't to have lots of UI tests. You should be working with your team to understand what should be covered via UI testing, what should be covered in other forms, for example, API and unit tests. We also want then, the another advantage is they fail at the correct place. So as mentioned, they're gonna, they're gonna provide you with faster feedback. And because of the scoped interactions, the debugging should be a lot simpler, as you already know that the small piece of functionality you're testing, so you're already scoped into what you're doing, it's going to reduce blockers as well. In an end-to-end -end test, you have lots of functionality being tested. So, for example, if I was to test multiple pages of a journey, maybe let's pick on Amazon, I'm testing the full purchasing process. What happens if I get to checkout and my test fails on updating my basket? Assuming I don't have any other tests, the actual payment process is not being tested because it's being blocked by the bug in the earlier step. So we're not picking things up as quickly and these blockers are then causing issues to test other pieces of functionality. Another thing is the decrease in flakiness in your tests. So the longer a test takes to run, statistically, the more likely it is to fail. By creating these atomic tests, it, creates, it decreases the number of possible breaking points in that test. So as I've mentioned in point two, you're inevitably going to see a decrease in fal false positives, which will in turn decrease the amount of time you spend on troubleshooting your issues, and that should mean a decrease of flakiness in your tests. Now, a really good question is, how do I make my end-to-end -end tests atomic? So I'm a believer in atomic testing, but there are a hundred reasons as to why you'll also need to perform full end-to-end -end testing. It really depends on your work culture and the product you're testing. When I read about atomic testing, it's usually one or the other, but I disagree. That's just my personal opinion. I think it's working out what tests you want to execute and at what time. And by this, I mean, what do I want to test when I'm testing a user story? And what do I want to execute at different phases in my continuous integration pipeline? If you are thinking, I should probably make my UI tests more atomic, then here's just a few ways on how you can make your tests much more atomic. The main reason, the main culprit, the biggest problem I see in is a test doing too much is when they're trying to mimic a user, and that's because we're trying to set up state using, say, the, the app graphical user interface. Now, there's a number of different ways to set up state, and that can be much faster than using just the UI process of the app you're testing. So a few examples, you could use an API. API requests take milliseconds, and you could do something like submitting a request that sets up all the data loads your app into the state you want in your post-response API request state. 
You could also use JavaScript to set the state of an application. So you could do some, some JavaScript code, which would log you in, refresh the page, and you're not using the UI interface. Another popular way is injecting and seeding test data into a database. And then you can also do things like preserve an authentication state. So tools like Cypress and Playwright now have ways of preserving authentication. One of the biggest issues I see in tests is if you need to authenticate, each test is logging in each time. This process likely has nothing to do with the functionality you want to test apart from the state that you need to be in. So you could perform all this actions once via an API call, or you could use the GUI. And then what you could do is reuse this state by doing things like storing cookies. And I'll have examples of how to do this in Cypress and Playwright in future videos. It's very simple and you do it once and then you just share that state. If you are thinking none of these options are possible and you're still stuck on making your tests atomic, then the biggest thing is communicate with your team ask them for ideas. The point of having a solid and quality product is ensuring your development team have made an application that's easy to test and the quality is a shared responsibility. It's likely that if you're working with experienced developers, they're more than likely to use to atomic testing principles from things like unit testing and they can offer advice on this. That's atomic testing. If you do have any questions, any concerns, or anything you want clarified, please drop a comment below. As always, a like and subscribe is appreciated. Thanks for watching and have a good day.